everyone and welcome we'll be looking at redox today so a couple of quick definitions just to get us started off on the topic where the actual name for this type of reaction comes from reduction oxidation so both processes occur in the same reaction reduction is the gain of electrons oxidation is the loss of electrons so if one species wants to gain something must give them so it loses them so a helpful mnemonic should all know this by now to help you remember it Oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. Or if you want to be unique, Leo the Lion says, grr. So loss of electrons, oxidation, gain of electrons, reduction. Um, it's worth pointing out the difference when you look at a reducing agent, though. Some people get a bit mixed up with this. Right, now a reducing agent causes what it is reacting with to be reduced. So it reduces the other side. Hence, obviously, itself, it must be oxidized. Now an oxidizing agent causes the other side to be oxidized, hence itself is reduced. So a reducing agent gives away electrons. An oxidizing agent takes electrons. pictures there to remember it. Oxidizing agent, beef, steals the electrons. Reducing agent, saint, dealing out punishment in this case, but usually obviously saints giving out sweets, whatever, to small kids if they're Irish and Catholic. Now the first bit of redox which will pick you up some easy marks hopefully after the definitions is assigning some oxidation numbers. Now by now we should obviously have recalled the general rules. All elements are zero, no exceptions. The dian relative swears they've been to the other side and it's plus one. They are wrong. Put it down to hallucination. So some examples there of elements. Zero, zero, zero. No exception. Now when you are looking at the compounds, or even molecules, then the overall sum of the oxidation numbers must equal the overall charge. So an example to show that. So what I mean here is the oxidation number of the sulfur and each of the oxygens, so we've got four of them, added together must equal minus two. Now the way you start assigning the oxidation numbers, a lot of them tend to stick with their preferred number quite a few of them which is actually change. Hydrogen typically always plus one except when it's an element or if it's a hydride. Hydride is when the hydrogen is joined to a metal. So sodium, magnesium, aluminium, things like that. Oxygen typically always minus two. Exceptions element or if it's joined to something which is more electronegative fluorine for example or if it's in a peroxide H2O2 hydrogen peroxide oxygen there would just be minus one the metals if you're looking at a group one metal plus one group two metal plus two group three plus three so from that, it's kind of like a jigsaw, trying to work out the pieces to put it together. 
The way you start assigning the numbers, if you have got species which aren't sort of one of the, the more common ones, look for who's more electronegative first. So oxygen or sulfur? Oxygen. Now we give oxygen its preferred charge. What I mean by preferred charge, it's in group six. It would prefer to gain two electrons to obviously get that full octet in the outer shell. So oxygen. Now we always quote the individual atoms. Oxygen is minus two. If you write minus eight in the exam because there's four of them it will be wrong quote the individual now for working out sulfur we've got four oxygens each of them is minus two so four times minus two minus eight so this is the sum we are looking at the overall charge minus two the sum of all of the oxidation numbers needs to equal minus 2. So what do we need to add to minus 8 to get us up to minus 2? 6. So sulfur is plus 6. Iron oxide is an example. So who's more electronegative? Oxygen. We will assign him his usual charge. How many oxygens are there? Three. So three times minus two, minus six. Now with the overall charge, it seems to be puzzling people because they start looking at their oxidation numbers here. When we talk about overall charge, it is the charge up here. Now, is there a charge? No, it's neutral. Zero. So we need to add a number to minus six to get us up to zero, so six. But that six is shared out amongst two ions. So if you want, you could have imagined this as being two unknown. So each individual ion plus three. Remember, we quote the individual. Now the next step, writing half equations. So this is where you're going to pick up the majority of the marks, what it'll usually always ask. There are a few exam favourites that they want you to know, things like the manganese, the chromate, but then they can also chuck in things like the sulfurics, the nitrics and so forth. So I will do an example on the, chrom well, the chromium one that you've seen plenty of times, just to recap us of the order and then I'll apply it to something which you may not have seen before. Right, so notice I've done step one. I've actually balanced my chromium straight off there. That's the first thing to do, balance it. Ignore oxygens or hydrogens, we'll balance those later when we are going to add some water as OH plus ions. This is doing it in aqueous conditions by the way. There's two conditions, aqueous and non-aqueous. If the question mentions anywhere in it about water, acids, or if you see things like the, the oxygens and again you're told you produce water, it's an aqueous condition. Follow these steps. Do a non-aqueous one in a moment. So step one, balance it. Step two, work out the oxidation numbers. So across here, simple ion. If you are looking at a simple ion, the oxidation number is the charge. Easy enough. Chromium across here. Oxygen's more electronegative, assign it its usual charge, minus two. We've got seven lots of minus two, so seven times minus two, minus 14. We need to get up to minus two, so we're gonna add 12. 
Now that 12 is shared out amongst two chromiums, so plus 6 for each individual. Now the third step, we are going to add electrons to balance out the oxidation numbers. Easiest way to remember that is always add the electrons to the more positive side. Because electrons have a negative charge, they are going to pull this down to match that. So how many electrons do we need to add? Common mistake here is you'll say three. But look at it. Each chromium needs three electrons to convert from this form to this form. And how many chromiums have we got? Two. So we need two lots of three electrons, or six. Now, next step, we need to balance the charges with hydrogen ions. So that's where the acid comes into play. Any equation, the charge on the reactant has to equal the overall charge on the product. Fundamental rule. So the overall charge on the left-hand side, minus 2 plus minus 6, so minus 8. Overall charge on the right-hand side, we've got two lots of 3 plus. So 6 plus on this side minus 8 on this side. So to get from minus 8 to plus 6 we need to add 14 hydrogen ions because each hydrogen ion has a plus 1 charge. And the final step is just to balance out any remaining oxygens and hydrogens with water. I'm not going to rewrite it all out again. You can see on this side we've got seven oxygens. On this side we have got none. So we'll add seven water over here. So this is your half equation. It should have electrons on one side, no electrons on the other. So I'll do an example now which you may not have seen. We'll say sulfuric acid converting to sulfur dioxide. So in the exam, they will tell you your start and end products. So they'll tell you sulfur, sulfuric acid converting to sulfur dioxide. So again, work through the steps. Ignore the oxygens and hydrogens, balance them at the end. So sulfurs first. Are the sulfides balanced? Yes. Work out the oxidation numbers. So across here, plus 4, because oxygen, each of them minus 2, 2 times minus 2, minus 4. Overall charge, 0. So plus 4, minus 4 equals 0. Across here, oxygen, 4 times minus 2, minus 8. Hydrogens, plus 1. So we're up to minus 6. We need to add a number to get us to 0. So sulfur is plus 6. So we need to add some electrons now. Add electrons to the more positive side to make the oxidation numbers balance. So we are going to add two electrons to this side. Next step, hydrogen ions. The charge on each side must be the same. Now overall charge on this side, neutral, zero. Overall charge on the left hand side, minus two. So we need to add some H pluses to this side. Now, final step, we're going to balance any remaining oxygens and hydrogens with water. Four oxygens on this side, two on this side, so we'll add two water. And notice, four hydrogens, two, three, four, balanced as well. So there's an example using sulfuric acid. So again, that was in aqueous conditions. Do one in non-aqueous now. So 
So a question we'll usually ask you when it's talking about this type, write the half equation for one of the metals. Now there is an easy and hard way to sort of think about it. The harder way, imagining when you're talking about redox, you're imagining everything is purely ionic. So breaking everything up into the ionic form, cancelling out any spectators, seeing what you are left with, etc. Or the easier way is, if I ask you to write the half equation for aluminium here, across here, what will be the charge on the aluminium in terms of an oxidation number? Well, the overall is neutral, oxygen, more electronegative, preferred charge, 3 times minus 2 is minus 6, so we need to add 6 to get up to the 0. The 6 shared out amongst two aluminiums, two aluminium 3 plus. Now, we more or less know our oxidation numbers. Element, simple ion, so we are going to add electrons to the more positive side. Now, how many electrons do we add? Again, do not make the mistake of saying three. We've got two aluminiums. And there is your half equation for aluminium. Straightforward. Right, uh, when you've got the half equations, next question can sometimes be put them together to get you a full ionic equation. So I'll use the one which, as I said, we've done the, the chromium one, the manganese, well, the manganate one. Um, so you'll see it start off like that. And you should be able to work through the five steps, what we've just said before, to get you that answer. So there is one half equation. Now we can put it together with another one. So in this case, we've got an ion releasing an electron. Again, it's where the name redox comes from. This side is being oxidised, it is gaining electrons. The ion here is being reduced. Sorry, other way. Reduced, gaining electrons, ion oxidised, losing the electrons. Yes, easy mistake to always double check yourself. Now in terms of how to squish these reactions together to get a full overall reaction, the electrons must balance. This reaction is demanding five electrons. It is holding a gun to the head of this one. It must supply five electrons. So you need to multiply the lines out to get a number where these are the same. So how do we make one the same as five? We'll just times everything by five. So now what you would do is you would combine all of the reactants and all of the products. And final bit to do, cancel off anything which appears on both sides. So your electrons should always cancel. And what you are left with is your full ionic equation, your full redox reaction as well.